home, you're probably still busy, but if you do have time to catch up on your reading, this is for you. I spoke with Seattle Public Library's Misha Stone about all the great virtual resources they have. We wanted to ask you, first of all, the other services that the library provides could be really useful to people during this stay at home period. Can you give us some examples? Absolutely. So our virtual library has always been available, but we've really kicked it into gear with this closure. Um, using our website, spl.org, you can sign up for a library card, stream movies, uh, documentaries, read and listen to books download music and listen to music. You can also get a personalized reading list through our Your Next Five book service, learn uh, a new skill through Your Next Skill, um, sing along with our virtual story times and, um, and more. You know, in on top of that, and since we're talking about reading, I'm going to put my reading glasses on. A couple of the other things that I noticed is that you have um, streaming services like Hoopla and Canopy. I thought I've heard, I'd heard of, it, of everything so far, but I don't know about those. Yeah, so Hoopla is a, a, a vendor that you can actually basically log in and listen, uh, watch popular movies, uh, TV shows, music, and comics are also on Hoopla. Um, and you can watch, listen, or read um, 15 titles a month. Canopy is where you're going to find indie and classic films and documentaries. It also includes the great courses. So this is a good time to sort of like get um, get in, involved with that. Um, you can watch up to five films a month. Um, there's also Canopy Kids that has unlimited access to kids materials and, and videos. And Access Video gives you unlimited access to documentaries, including HBO's documentaries and their most recent um, award-winning Chernobyl documentary. So. Yes, which is great if people haven't seen it. Um, let's talk about, you mentioned that uh, there were courses. What kinds of subjects? Um, the great courses are, are more on that kind of like, you know, um, learning about great works of literature and art and music and science. So it can really give you background in areas that you might be wanting to learn about now. That is awesome. And then I'm also seeing here on my list, two things that I love, bingo and books. There's an adult book bingo card this week. Tell me what that is. Yes, yeah, so we're really excited to be partnering with Seattle Arts and Lectures. Again, it's our sixth year of partnering with them. I'm giving adults um, basically the opportunity to creatively challenge themselves in their reading over the summer. And every summer, people are really curious to see what categories we give them to read. Um, I also want to mention that uh, Susanna Ryan, a Seattle Walk Report, is the artist for our bingo card this year. Uh, we'll be releasing it a couple weeks early in May, so um, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but we have already released the first uh, bingo category, which is uplifting, which is what we all need right now. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, and uh, additionally, we'll be uh, doing um, bingo category teasers every Thursday on our Shelf Talk blog, so keep, uh, keep uh, an eye on that as well. Very good. Thank you for that. April is National Poetry Month, so you have a suggestion from our U.S. Poet Laureate. Yeah, I did want to just mention that we have some great lists that our collection librarians are maintaining on our Overdrive and Libby app, which give you some great um, opportunities to try some new poets, and, and poems are a great way to have a bite-sized um, uh, basically story and, and perspective that some of us can't really read through a novel right now. Um, so poetry is a great way to do that. I was going to mention Tracy K. Smith, who was the American Poet Laureate from 2017 to 2019, uh, and her collection Life on Mars, which is uh, obviously inspired by David Bowie, and David Bowie <laughs> makes appearances in the poems. Oh, awesome. Um, but if you missed her uh, tenure, um, that, that collection won a Pulitzer Prize and is well worth looking into. So you have some always available e-audio books to highlight. Tell me a little bit more about those. Yeah, um, we have been um, uh, fortunate enough to have a collection of audiobooks that are always available for you to download and listen to. And a couple I wanted to highlight, there's one book in particular that, uh, that I love to put on all kinds of lists for people. It's called Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, and the subtitle in, is Indigenous Wisdom. Scientific Knowledge and the Teachings of Plants, and that's by Robin Wall Kimmerer, and it's a gorgeously written book of essays. Each chapter is about a plant, what it can teach us if we're willing to learn, and what we can learn from nature, our connection um, to that and, and to each other. It's just a gorgeously, gorgeously written book of essays. Thank you for that. And you're right. I think some of those shorter topics or shorter pieces might give us a chance to get back into reading, but not feel like we have, you know, to have a really long attention span to get through. 
Yes. And when the author reads it themselves as well, it's just you really get into the rhythm of what they're sharing and audiobooks are a great way to, to right. open yourself up. Absolutely. Just sit down outside and listen. Um, you also have a, a group of comfort reads. Thank you so much. I believe these should go with comfort food personally, <laughs> but uh, you're in charge of the book titles. So what, yeah. what would you suggest? Yeah, um, I have a few. For one, um, I uh, have so many books at my desk at work I didn't have uh, today, um, but there's a book called Everfair by Seattle author Nisi Shaw, and it's also an always available audiobook. And it is about what if um, King Leopold's reign of terror had been stopped um, and that a utopian community had been created in the Belgian Congo. I think this is a good time to be thinking about utopias and possible um, pasts and futures. So it's one of those character-driven, lyrically written um, books that will really make you think and, and gain perspective. That's an interesting choice. I think Lots of people have read King Leopold's Ghost, which yes. spells out what actually happened in the Congo. Um, so that might be a, an antidote a little bit, at least mentally. Tell me a bit about what reading means to you during this period of time and what you think it can offer us. Yeah, I think that reading makes us feel more connected. It, it helps us see, um, I think that right now, the fact that COVID-19 is helping us see that our world is all connected. Reading does the same thing. It, it, it gives us both windows into other lives and in many cases is a mirror for others. So people see themselves and what they read. They also see people who are not like themselves and it expands their compassion and understanding. Are you seeing more people forming uh, book groups via technology on House Party or Zoom or some app? Yeah, there have been, I think, um, some really creative endeavors out there. I think the library will continue to look into it, both our virtual story times. I think there's potential for author talks and book groups to meet. Um, I think that we're trying to stay connected in any way we can right now. Um, it's, it's helpful. Thank you so much for all the things that you do. Keep us updated and we'll continue to follow what the library is doing and share it with our viewers. Okay, thank you so much, Margaret. Thanks a bunch. Love Misha, love her suggestions. Um, if you'd like to know more, please just head over to New Day's website and we have links to the books, to the blogs, to the media and all the other resources from the library. Back after this.